Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Mac Whisperer Academy. I'm Dylan Stewart, the Mac Whisperer, and in today's session, I'm gonna teach you everything that you need to know about backing up your Mac. We've all been there. You park your car by an empty parking meter. And you think to yourself, I'm only going into the store for like a minute. I don't need to scramble for a quarter. It'll be okay. And you walk into that store and you're there for like a minute and you walk out and there's a parking ticket on your windshield. And you pick it up and it's a $150 parking ticket. And you think to yourself, wow, that was really dumb. That 25 cents would have saved me $150. That's exactly how I think about the process of backing up your Mac. Most people talk about doing it. They want to do it. They think it's important. They understand what will happen if they don't back up their computer. But then they don't do it. And the next thing you know, they're calling me and they're saying, Dylan, my computer just crashed or I just spilled water on it or somebody just stole my computer. What do I do? And the first question I always ask is, do you have a backup to which I usually hear, you know, I meant to, I thought I did, or my personal favorite, isn't everything all backed up in the cloud? No, it's not. Not unless you take specific steps that we're going to talk about in this video. If you aren't taking those steps, then no, your computer isn't going to automatically back itself up. And no, the cloud is not going to save you unless you're prepared. So let's break it down. There's a couple of different ways of backing up your computer. First, Let's talk about the cloud. There is lots and lots of your data that can be stored in the cloud. If you're using iCloud on your computer and things are configured properly, your photos and your address book and your calendar and potentially even the files on your desktop and in your documents folder might all be in the cloud. But that doesn't mean the applications are in the cloud. That doesn't mean your preferences and your settings are in the cloud. And that doesn't mean that the files that aren't on your desktop or in your documents folders are in the cloud. But maybe you've got Dropbox and you think to yourself, well, isn't all my stuff backed up through Dropbox? Well, the things that you've put into your Dropbox folder or onto your Dropbox account might be, but your applications aren't, your settings aren't, your preferences aren't. And once again, any files that you didn't specifically place into Dropbox or upload to Dropbox, they're not there either. That's the way it is with all these cloud softwares. They're backing up your data but that doesn't mean they're backing up your settings, your preferences, and the other files in your account that are so hard to recuperate. If you've ever lost data or had a hard drive crash and had to rebuild your computer from scratch and remember what were those programs and how did I have them set up, you know it can be a painful, confusing, and difficult process and you might never get yourself back to where you started. But if you have a proper backup, that's not an issue. There are services that are online backups. There's a handful of them that I've used. There's iDrive, Carbonite, Mosey, and Backblaze, amongst others. And all of these are subscription-based services where you pay a certain amount per month or per year to have the contents of your files backed up. And yes, if they're set up properly, they might back up the applications and the settings. But the problem with these online backup systems is that when you need the data, you usually need it yesterday. That computer just crashed and you're in this frantic rush to get back to work and to get things back in motion. But if you have a catastrophic incident, it can take days to get your stuff back onto that new computer. And when you have a catastrophe, when you've got a problem, it's always gonna happen at the worst possible time. You've got a deadline tomorrow. And now your computer's dead, and what are you going to do? You're going to wait for that drive to get shipped to you? No, that's not going to happen. Which is why I love online backups and cloud backups in an emergency, but only as a secondary form of backup. My primary form of backup is always going to be a simple backup drive. They're really inexpensive. They're really easy to find. You can buy them on Amazon or at Best Buy or at Fry's, or at pretty much any store. You can even buy them at Staples or Target. These hard drives are inexpensive, portable, and extremely convenient. Why are they so convenient? Well, because you just plug them in. 
and your computer will automatically back up to them. You see, the Apple computers are configured with an automatic backup system called Time Machine. And all you have to do is plug in a hard drive and turn Time Machine on, and it will back everything up. Everything. So that if anything happens, if your hard drive crashes, or you spill water, or you buy a new computer, you can be back up and running in a matter of hours, not days. The first step is buy the hard drive. But I get all these questions. Which hard drive is the right one? Should I get an SSD? What brand should I get? How big should it be? It doesn't matter. What matters is that you have one. I recommend going up to Amazon and searching for a portable external USB hard drive. You'll see all of these results come up in that search and most of them will cost between $50 and $150. I highly recommend getting one that's larger than the size of your computer potentially significantly larger. You can buy a four terabyte drive for about $150 from brands like Western Digital or Seagate. These are reliable, well-known, well-respected brands. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug my backup drive into my computer, just like this. It may take a moment or two before the hard drive is recognized by your computer, but once it is, you can go into your system preferences right here and go right into the Time Machine section right here. From the Time Machine section, you'll see an option to select your backup drive. Go ahead and click on that button. Select the hard drive here, like this, and then down in the bottom left, you're gonna notice you have an option to encrypt the hard drive if you'd like. Encrypting the hard drive makes it more secure, but also makes it take a little longer to back up. If you do encrypt your hard drive, it means your passwords and other information can also be saved into there. So if that's important to you, go ahead and click that button and then click the Use Disk button on the bottom right. Once you've gone ahead and clicked Use This Disk, the computer will automatically start to send its files to that backup drive. And it will send them to that backup drive every hour that the hard drive is connected. People always say to me, how often should I back up? And my answer is, I don't know how much data would you be upset about losing? If you don't create that many new files, you know, you can back up once a month and be fine. But if you're like me and you're constantly creating files and saving files and changing settings and downloading programs, I like to be backed up at least every day. The way I recommend people do it is that if you have a laptop, you keep your backup drive wherever you generally charge that laptop. And when you plug in the laptop to charge it, you go ahead and you plug in the backup drive as well. That way, every day you're getting a backup run. If you have a desktop computer, I recommend leaving the backup drive connected perpetually. Why not? It's just sitting there. It's not like that desktop computer moves anywhere. You might as well leave it there and then you will always have a backup. Now, before I wrap up this backup conversation, there's one other thing I wanna talk about. It's called a NAS, an N-A-S. These are a special kind of hard drive. Rather than it plugging in via a USB cord that plugs directly into your computer, a NAS drive plugs into your network using generally an ethernet plug. That means it plugs into the router where your internet initially comes from. The benefit to a NAS drive is that a NAS drive can be accessed by every computer in the network. So if you've got a bunch of computers, or you're part of a family and your wife's computer and your son's computer and your daughter's computer are all in the same house, rather than buying five or six of these guys, which can get expensive, I recommend buying a NAS drive. Western Digital makes a really good NAS drive called a MyCloud drive. And the MyCloud drives are fairly affordable and they range in size from one terabyte all the way up to eight terabytes. You can buy them on Amazon easily and you plug it directly into your router at home. And once it's plugged in, you can easily go into your computer and tell your computer to connect to that and back up to it. By using a NAS drive, every computer in your network can be backed up without ever needing to plug it in. Once you've connected it, it's automatically backing up regularly whenever that computer is in the network. Even if it's a laptop, even if they're a kid that's gone away to college and only comes back a couple of times a year, if they bring their computer with them when they come home, it's an easy process. As soon as it gets on the network, the computer goes, I remember this backup drive and continues to back it up. It's a great way to make sure you've got a backup. 
I find the USB hard drives to be a little more effective if you aren't part of a big family. But if you do have numerous members and you want to make sure all their stuff is protected, a NAS drive is definitely the way to go. It's also important to note that if multiple people back up to the same hard drive, whether it's a USB hard drive or a NAS drive, the time machine automatically keeps everybody's data separate. So your wife's data and your data are in separate sections of that hard drive and they don't crisscross or intermingle, meaning that you can safely back up your stuff without worrying that your kids are going to accidentally stumble on or delete things that belong on your computer. Everybody's backup stays separate. And it's so easy to do it. You know, why pay that $150 parking ticket? Why make that mistake? Take the time, do it right now, because the number of people who have said, I was going to do it tomorrow, the day after they had a hard drive failure, a liquid spill, something was broken or stolen. The number of times I've heard, I was just going to back up tomorrow, is almost infinite. Don't wait until you have the problem. Get in front of the problem. I highly recommend go onto Amazon, find one of those drives, whether it's a USB drive or a NAS drive, get it ordered, plug it in, and start backing up so that you don't have to call me and say, hey Dylan, my computer just crashed. What do I do? Because if you have a backup, the next thing you do is get back to work. I'm Dylan Stewart, the Mac Whisperer. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up so that other people can find it more easily. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, take a moment, click the subscribe button and the notify bell so that you're always alerted when we post new videos. We release new videos every week. And if there's a topic you're looking for, drop it in the comments and I'll make a video just for you. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.